Hey, what's going on guys? The Money Raider here, back with another amazing video. Sure, let's call it that. Okay, I'm going to be teaching you guys two ways of crafting today. Now, there are basically three ways in total, but the third way is really complex, so we're going to save that for another video. So, let's hop right into it. So first, we're going to need our custom items, okay? Now, this is going to be for the first crafting way, which is floor crafting. So I'm going to give you a pretty good example. These all have MBT value because they have custom names and they float and they're enchanted, which diamonds can't be. Let me throw them all down. You ready? Whoa! Magic! Ooh! Ah! So I show you how you can change the environment. You can do particles, you can do sounds, you can do custom items that have glowing, it can have attribute modifier, it can have lore. You can do a good amount of stuff. Now we're actually gonna use this, okay? So we're gonna keep these for now. But that is the floor crafting. So you're like, how did you do that? Well, right over here, we have the cut. So it's floor crafting is fairly simple. It's not super complex, but it does take a little bit of known. So if we go here, this gives us the first command. So we're going to execute as the item. And now that's going to have the MBT of item. It's going to have the tag of C1. That's the tag for the first diamond. Okay, it adds C11B. Then we're going to do add S. This helps us with later on the tagging. So you want to do as and then add S. You do if entity and an item, only one within a distance of one and or lower. And then it has the tag of C21B. You do if entity, and then you do the second one with C3. And then if, if all those are correct, it'll tag at us and at craft one. Then at craft one, we are going to simply just play the sound of the end portal spawning to everyone within a distance of 10. Then we're going to do the particle of tone of undying. Uh, particle command is a little complicated. This tells you what, where, comparison to where you're executing from. This tells you, um, basically, these three are the, like, the X, Y, Z, and the thickness. So you can make, like, a rectangle of particles, and you can do, and so on like that. That zero means there's no speed, so they're not going to go flying around. 100 means there's 100 particles, and force means even if you have, like, minimal particles in your um, video settings, if I turn the particles there. Yeah, if I turn that to minimal, it'd still show it to you. Then we have this whole thing. So, um, here it is. So it's gonna execute a craft one, and it's just gonna summon this item. Now, you're like, how are you gonna get all this? How are you gonna be that good at commands? Well, you don't, you just use MC Stacker. It's literally the best way to do it. You slash summon, let's do item, item there okay I'm gonna make it a diamond we're gonna make it have a name of booba -da -da. okay attribute modifier let's make it give me maximum health sure make that percentage main hand okay if I just copy that in there and do this boop yeah, blah, blah, blah. Doubles your health. Okay. MC Stacker, best way to go. Totally recommend it. Use it. Don't abuse it. <laughs> okay. So, where were we? We're here. So, it summons that item. Then it's going to just add the craft one, which is the first diamond, the custom diamond one. It'll set a gold block. Now, this will only set one. And if you want to make it look better, you can summon a leash knot or use a line position, which I'll show you how to do later, to make it uh, summon the item at like the exact center instead of where the items are, which might be like here or something in the gold block. That would look weird. And I can show you how to do that later. And then you kill three of them that have the tag of C, which is the three custom items. They have C, 1B, and they also have their own C1, C2, C3. And it only kills three of them. And that includes the, the item that has the tag of craft one. So that gives you a nice little product of this. Ooh, ah, spooky. So then 
That is floor crafting. Floor crafting is fairly simple in the grand scheme of things. Then we have dispenser crafting. So here, let's get a item frame and a crafting table. So I'm gonna show you the, the whole system first and then I will um, show you how to do it. So if you take a craft table and put an iron frame and put, place this down, you have a custom crafter. You can even have like items on creation. You can have you can create blocks around it on creation. And yeah, we're gonna leave this one. But if I go over here <laughs> and place this down, if I break it, you can make it do stuff like explode or whatever. Just whenever you break the thing, you can make things happen. So I added two custom crafting recipes to show you. First one is that I take the cool looking thing, okay, and place a item on creation. I can't place that. Nope, it's not working. But if I place one, it instantly changes to another cool item with efficiency six and 75% speed when in offhand. So this is the less resource intensive way of crafting an instantaneous craft without any like particles or anything cool looking. With dispenser crafting, you can really only do instantaneous craftings, but you can make it look better, which I'm gonna show you. By the way, all, all these are the same. There's not really any difference. If you take um, a cool looking thing and place this on the bottom, does that and creates particles and it looks a lot better. Now it's the cool item. So it's a different item. It's efficiency 10 and it gives you a whole heck of a lot more speed. So that's a little preview of what you can do with dispenser crafting. Also, it doesn't have to look like this. If you use, if you use like a custom model data, you can make it so the block looks like a new custom crafter, and you can change this, obviously. Um, you can't change the GUI, because, I mean, you could, but there's not really enough room to do it, unless you just wanted to have like one slot and then an output slot, then you could use these for like, you could have one that has the custom model data, so it changes all this. In my Nature Plus video, um, in that data pack, that has a chest GUI crafting table, which I will be explaining in a further video. Right now, th this is just the easy vanilla way to do it, having craft hill there, or you can obviously move it around however you want. Y you could use multiple arm stands and make it look cool if you wanted to. So, let me show you how the coding works here. So this right here is the ending thing, or the, the ending sequence. If it executes from the tag of craft, if the block there is there, which means someone destroyed that block, it'll just summon a creeper that will instantly explode, and then here, and if the block is air, it'll kill itself. Fairly simple there. This is the starting sequence. Um, so basically, executes as um, item frames that have the tag of totem of undying. That's my little acronym there, T O U one B, which is we got that from the floor crafting over there. Um, and then at at itself. If the block uh, right beneath it is a craft table, how we did it, it'll tag itself with spawn craft. Then you have a whole lot of stuff here. So the only important, or the main important part is the top. So it's gonna execute at the spawn craft. It's gonna align X, Y, Z, which means it'll align to all these corners. You see how if I go right here, it's at like the, the perfect amount. Not really, but the, the centers are actually at 0.5, not at like the actual coordinates. So if I open this up again, um, that's why you do position 0 0.5, 0 0.5 to get you in the center of the block. Then it goes down one. This is to position it perfectly, just to make it look nice and make it a lot cleaner. Then it summons this armor stand. Again, use MC stacker. You can use craft table. It's small. I made it in, uh, enchant looking. The name is craft. And it has the tags of tag craft right there. Then, it's going, it's going to execute at the spawn craft, align again, and I'll set the block right beneath it to have a diamond that um, has a display of item on creation, and also the dispenser has the custom name of custom crafter. And this, again, MC stacker, it's really nice. And then at the end, it just kills the spawn craft. So that's the beginning and the ending parts. There's no recipes yet. Here are our two recipes. These are just to give me the items so I can 
use this, which I will show you how this works. So first we have the first method, which doesn't look as cool, and the second one method, which doesn't look cool. And you might be thinking, okay, why am I going to use this method? This is five times as intensive. But if you're using functions, it's actually the same which is kind of cool because you can just have this instead of tagging it to run that function and then have these five and just keep this code in the in the function that you're running so that then you have these five in that function and only runs once when it's crafted so yeah that's a lot of code um there's not a great way to explain it so basically what it's doing is we're executing at all of those who have the tag of craft okay then we're gonna do if block right where it's at okay is a dispenser okay then right here you're gonna do something you are going to want to go to your recipe this is my little recipe here and click f3 plus I now this will now copy all of the information of that block. It's positioning, everything that's inside of it, all that stuff. So then you're going to paste that into here and delete all the code, or some of the code at the beginning. So you don't want all of this, you see, because it's red. So if I delete all this and just leave the items part there, that will work, just like that. So that one will detect if that, then if that is true, it's going to run a data command and it's going to merge the block where it is and then the same thing. Obviously you will, you'll um, use F3 and I to get the rest or the output, but you can then just do the same thing. You can just take all that out and voila. That's how you do it in one command, okay? That's basically what this is here. Now, the other command is pretty much the same with a few changes. So, we're executing as instead of at, okay? Then you're doing at as. And then, if it sees that recipe, it's gonna tag itself with craft run. Then these, executes at craft run, it does the particle, it does the sound, then it does the recipe where I'll at craft run, it'll do the data merge, and then it removes it. And you might be thinking, okay, if I had multiple recipes though, they don't know which recipe is correct. But the thing is, this is closed, meaning there will never be a tag of craft run in the world unless the code is being run between this one and this one. So craft run only exists in between here, which is inside of one tick, so you will never see craft run, which means you could link these up in a long strand but if you use functions you only have to have one and then you have another then another then another then another and these all lead to a separate file that has these five or they lead to their own separate file of these five so what I generally do when I'm doing dispenser crafting is I place like my recipes in here I use f3 and I then I place my result in here wherever I want it I use F3 and I there. So it's a good way of also keeping track of the recipes. And I, I like using it that way. You, the, you can do it however you want. So this has been a basic overview of the main two ways to do custom crafting. Though there is a third way, which I will be showing in another video. And the third way, if you're advanced with coding, you, the third way is really amazing. You guys are going to like it. But these are more of the intermediate, beginner, and medium data pack users for that. So thank you guys for watching. I enjoyed making this video. I hope you guys learned some stuff and had fun. That's all for today. Bye and have a nice day.